Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to this special edition of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby, brought to you by Heineken. As we look ahead to the Heineken Champions Cup final at Twickenham on Saturday, and would you believe it, there are fans back in the ground again. We are very much looking forward to being there. We've got competition details. We're looking forward to meeting a few of you at the game itself, which is an all-French flair, as some of you might say. Yeah. I've been working on that for a while. That's Apologies for on, that. That's no. why you're on this show, pal. That's, that's why you're on this show. the dross that you can expect. Um, in terms of the backstory, it's more than a decade. I can't believe it's been a decade since Toulouse's familiar brand of glorious rugby was lighting up a final. They're up against the La Rochelle side, who don't mind playing a bit themselves, but into their first ever European uh, finale in the big boys competition. Ben is here as you would expect. Lord is here, and it is a huge honour to welcome the great, I mean, incredibly stylish Yannick Nyanga as well, just bringing a little bit of je ne sais quoi to proceedings, which we love. How are you, first and foremost? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. How did you get brought into this? Was it Ben who's convinced you? I'm, I'm wondering why a man as stylish and as classy as you <laughs> has ended up on our podcast. Um, you just called me and, and said uh, you wanted me in the in, in this show and uh, I owe Ben a lot so uh, we- <laughs> <laughs> you don't owe me you don't owe me anything and the only reason I don't know why I did it already because in the introduction you already killed me I used to be this fl- slick Frenchman and now all of a sudden I'm just Ben and then the as slick as French Idris Elba is rocking up and he absolutely kills it so I'm already you know downgraded four or five levels which is only fair no yeah. one is, is downgrading uh, compared to Ben this is obviously a huge debt that you're paying. You can chalk off a lot of the, the favours that you owe to Ben. And in doing so, you're also killing Kayser's currency, which has been growing pretty astronomically here in the uh, in the UK. So we're all having a lot of fun at this point. Um, how are you, Yannick? T- I mean, obviously, you know, to lose through and through as a player, but Racing 92 at the moment, how is, how's the day job? It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm enjoying the, 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 my new job as a director of sport here. Um, we had a we had a great start of the season with this uh, Champions Cup final, uh, lost against Exeter. Um, we we wish we were uh, uh, in the final this uh, this Saturday, but uh, that's 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 the way it is. Uh, we we had a lot of injuries uh, uh, after the the Six Nations uh, tournament and also after the, our game against uh, Edinburgh. Uh, we lost thirteen players. Uh, 11 was uh, from the starting team, so it was too much to... What, from one game? Not in one game, but in, uh, in the, the the last two games of the Six Nations and the quarterfinal, the, um, the the game against Edinburgh. Wow. This weekend, are you allowed to cheer for Toulouse? Do you want to cheer for Toulouse? Or are you totally racing 92 now and you really don't mind who wins so long as rugby is the victor? I, st- I still have some friends in Toulouse, so I will cheer for Toulouse. Good. Good to hear. Um, it's very nice to have you on the show. And we're looking forward to diving into, you know, the fabric of Toulouse and the club that you spent 10 years with and enjoyed so much success with. But Ben, I, I just want to start with you, sort of, first of all, on, on the overall picture. All French affair at Twickenham, 10,000 fans in. Does it feel like we're getting a little bit of normality back in our lives? I think the main thing is is the 10,000 people. Listen, that's an absolute blessing. I think we, we've been waiting for this for a long, long time. Rugby is, is a sport of emotion, of passion, of commitment. And it would have been extraordinary to offer the, the Toulouse and the La Rochelle fan and, a, and the possibility to come over to London for a weekend and to celebrate where rugby is, right? Drink 100 pints before, have a fantastic game, drink 100 pints after and just enjoy well, no, I was going to say the sunshine, but but basically the chucking it down of rain that has been in the last couple of days. But that, that, that's the normality. But just 10,000 people is already incredible. So I was uh, at the Auto Nations Cup for the for the final of that of, of that competition, and there was 2,000 people. To be honest, it's not the same. But 10,000, I'm just hopeful that you will hear the cheer, the loud, and just the, the, the raw emotion that's going to be behind it. So that's already beautiful. It's a fantastic way to, to finish a competition with two teams, to be honest, who have been dominated from, from, from the get-go, who've offered some particularly impressive performance in terms of positive attacking orientated rugby and that's why I'm delighted for the both of them to be there but I would love to hear sort of Yannick's take on La Rochelle we can speak about them because they, they deserve it and they almost they're that outsider that you want to do well 
because they represent everything that we like about rugby. Positive town, positive club, positive boys. But Toulouse, I, I would love. So I've I've hated Yannick for a long time in my career <laughs> <laughs> because they killed us. They killed us for a long time, and they had this winning culture which was just mind blowing. And 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 then they went into a little dip, right, for a couple of years, and now they're back. And I, I was just wondering if if La, if La Rochelle win it. The boys like the Greg Aldrit and the the, the Bourgarit and the Victor Vito will have a will have a statue in La Rochelle for the rest of their life. If Antoine Dupont and all his mates win it, they're only part of the club, right? They will only only join a club of Toulouse, and they'll be like, "Listen, mate, we've got four stars already. You just <laughs> added one, but you didn't create you create history." And I was just wondering, with Yannick, do, do you think that's a fair point, or do you think it's been so long? That it will be an incredible success. No, I, I completely agree with what you what you just said. I think uh, um, when you when you're playing for Toulouse, you're part of something way bigger than, than yourself, and um, and as you said, uh, you're just uh, making the legacy uh, continue when you when you're playing for Toulouse. And as you said, uh, uh, when you play for La Rochelle, um, making the history this way because I don't think they even won the the French Championship. Uh, No. Uh, and and as a first title, the the Champions Cup will be a, a, a huge huge addition to, to 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 the club. They are working very good uh, for ages now. Uh, I think it's been 10 years. They they are back in the in the top 14. And um, uh, credit to uh, to Patrice Colazzo uh, who, who made a, a lot for this club and um, and he's now in Toulon. But I think he he has a part in the, in the development of all the players. Uh, Uh, like um, uh, Gourdon, or, or, or he, he, he was um, uh, originally uh, there for the signing of uh, a player like uh, Victor Vito. So I think um, La Rochelle will, will get there one day. I just hope it won't be this Saturday because it, it will be too easy for them. Uh, first final, first win. <laughs> Uh, uh, we know the struggle. We've been there. We, we we've been there for three times, three losses. Benjamin can talk also about the fact that uh, uh, getting into a, fi <laughs> a, a top 40 yeah. final or a Champions Cup final, not winning it. So he knows uh, what it is, and uh, we, we'll be so jealous if if Lausch and uh, win it for the for the for the first final. You're picking this up very quickly. We love guests who come on and pile into our regular host, Yannick. You are very welcome <laughs> whenever you choose to be. Um, ben, welcome to the club. Um, there are so many things to talk about. And Mike, I want to ask you ab about the meat of this and about, I, I think, why English fans and, and Irish and Welsh fans, uh, Scottish fans, of course, should, should tune in this week. But Yannick, you, you were... You were to lose through and through as a player, as I said. I just want to get a bit more from you on the history of that club. And when you arrived, you know, early in your career, what was it about Toulouse? What did you learn in the early years? And what does the club mean to you nowadays? When I, when I, when I signed for Toulouse, I said that uh, I was 21 at this age and, uh, and uh, I signed for the club of my dream. I'm born in 83. And uh, the first team I... I could see winning was to lose uh, 94, 95, 96, 97, um, four titles in a row, uh, the double in in uh, in 96. So I wanted to play for this team, and and also when I sh when I chose to, uh, to to sign there, the year I chose to sign there, they won the the the, the Heineken Cup at this time. It was the Heineken Cup um, against Stade Français. So I was watching the game every 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 weekend and. Uh, I love the, the fact that this club has a real vision of the rugby they want to play. So the way you play rugby in Toulouse is the same uh, if you play under six years old or in the first team. So from there, um, you, can, you, can, you can breathe this way, this type of playing uh, on every stage of the club. Um, you can see the, the staff uh, of the first team, all former players, they all play for the, for the club. So uh, there is a huge plague identity um, uh, of Toulouse. Uh, I think what La Rochelle is building, uh, um, they, got, they got everything uh, like Toulouse, except the, the style of, of playing. Uh, they changed a lot of uh, coach. Um, uh, I think they changed three times in, in, in the last three seasons. So talking about the way they want to play, um, there, there is... It's not as strong as, as it is in, in Toulouse. I don't know if I made myself clear. Or... Yeah, you have, very much so. What is that 
style of play? I mean, we can all see it when Toulouse play, but how do you identify it and how is it baked into the fabric of the club? Is there a name for it? Is How do you get it from top to bottom? A lot of people talk about the French fair. I, I don't know if it's the French fair. I don't know even if, if, if the French fair does exist, but uh, um, the, 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 um, the, there is someone who can talk about it very well. It's uh, Pierre Villepreux. He was talking about the intelligence of uh, every situation, intelligence situationnelle in French. So it means that you are playing what you see. And he was giving the example of uh, this type of intelligence. Is you never you, you come to to a place you never you never been there, but you know you will come by the the, the entrance door. This is he's talking about this intelligence. And if the door is closed, you will try to find a way to get in the the house. So he, he uh, thinking that way. He brings that to the field. So he, he doesn't want to give the solution to the player, but he wants to uh, expose player to situation that they will find a way to, to, to fix it. I, it. It's hard to, to, to explain in English. I don't no, know if I, I was clear. I, but. I got it. I, I mean, yes, it, it's in the moment and, and playing what you see, as we would say. When you train in Toulouse, it's all about games, all about games with rules. And these rules gives behaviors to players. And, right. and and then then you watch the game you, you watch the, the the answer you you, you found uh, because of the rules and then you 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 have a chat on this and and you find a solution and and this way uh, when someone is doing something everyone react the same and you can't you can't defend that when it's play at the best level you can't defend that because even the ball carrier doesn't know what you're going to do because the, the defense will tell him what to do. It's really hard to, to explain that to someone who didn't uh, experience that. Yeah. But you have to know that a lot of players learn to, to, to play rugby this way from five years old, six years old. And, and when they arrive at 20, at the age of 20, a player like Romain Tamak, for example, he is used to that from, from the start. So it's, it's so easy for them. There's a wonderful French mystique to it. It's like rugby in a different matrix. And I just wonder, Ben, from your perspective, you look at Toulouse, you've already said that, you know, you've hated Yannick for all of the success, but how does the rest of French rugby look at Toulouse? Listen, I think there is, you always want to hate the winners and they won so much for so long time that there was a little bit of hatred, which was obviously down to jealousy, which was the situation that I was faced in. Because he didn't, he, 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 he obviously put my head in the mud when he spoke about all the, the finals that I lost, but he had the courtesy of not saying that in 2005 he beat me, <laughs> to lose me, you know, before he joined them. But it's just, um, but now there's an aspect of the, the revival of French rugby is through the, the French team and everybody's delighted for it. But whether you like Toulouse or not, you love Antoine Dupont because he represents a style of rugby that everybody wants to play. Whether you liked, the, you know, La Rochelle or not, you like Brice Dulin because he just represents the style of play that we like. Whether you like to, uh, to lose again, it's Romain Tamak and all those guys. So there's there's more than just a club, uh, you know, sort of brotherhood and allegiance to. Uh, and then Toulouse are in the final against La Rochelle. So the French fans will be absolutely delighted. But there's the way of winning that sort of um, uh, speaks to everyone. And when they're on fire, Toulouse at the moment are capable of producing such a high quality, expandable sort of style of rugby that appeals to everyone. Cheslin Colby, you feel that he was, like you said, with Romain Tamak when he was seven years old and in the Stade Toulouse Academy and learning all that. And you're just delighted because that style of rugby appeals to a morose sort of last 18 months where we want to have a big smile on our faces when we watch rugby. So I think the, the French fans are, for one, Absolutely delighted to see that there's two French teams in the Champions Cup final and one in the Challenge Cup final. That means that French rugby is back where it should be. That means that the boys have worked very, very hard and made a lot of sacrifices to actually put, you know, France back on the map. So after that, it's just icing on the cake and it's made the better, best team win and made the best type of rugby win. There's something wonderfully romantic about this, Tins, isn't it? Which, having grown up at the wreck and plied your trade, ploughed your trade, I would say, <laughs> at King's Home, is there a part of you that's sort of the, the romance and the mystique and the grandeur of all of this, I'd have had a bit of that. Well, first and foremost, it's it's the, it's the style that they play in at the moment. And, you know, we talk about French and how the French t national team has changed to embrace youth. And it seems to be bubbling through all these, these teams. Names that you might not have known 
uh, for, as an Englishman uh, across the board, whether it be Algeet or Godon or, you know, well, obviously Dupont's being around, Entomac, have all suddenly risen to the top and the cream has, has risen to the top. And then they add in the style that they play, fast tempo, high speed, quick rook speed, um, multi-offloading game, keep the ball off the floor. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll, we'll keep the ball alive as... Uh, as the uh, as Ogara will say, even though he, it actually they don't offload anywhere near as much as Toulouse, but um, it's 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 all led to that uh, the place where these two teams deserve to be in the final, and I'm actually really excited because I want to watch the style of rugby. I want the kids coming up over here to watch this style of rugby because it's not necessarily all about the power game, which sometimes English rugby can get carried away with. It's you know. You look at someone like Dupont, you don't think he's physical, but then you see him palming people off. But at the same time, he'll do the double pump over the top underneath and someone's gone, oh, and then he'll just run underneath this post. And I think all those little skills that we can all learn from and benefit, fortunately for me, I don't have to. I never had those skills. that never will do. And I'll just appreciate watching them. But I think that's what comes, comes out of this game. There is a good contrast in styles as well. Um, I think... Ugo Moller said that, you know, Toulouse aren't a good team if they don't get quick ball. So, and then you look at La Rochelle, who they're playing, their defence has been outstanding. I mean, I think that they gave up the least amount of points in the whole, in the in the tournament so far this, this year. So, if they can do a job, it, it gives them a chance. But this Toulouse team is something special for me. I, I, I can't see them losing it, but never... I've learnt to never sort of underestimate La Rochelle, so <laughs> we'll they see. Keep surprising, don't they? Um, Yannick, I want to find out a bit more about what it was like coming into a Toulouse team that that sort of beat everything in front of it, and the likes of Fabian Palouse and uh, Yannick Brew, etc. I mean, was it a welcoming environment? Did you have to fight very hard to get into it? What did you learn from the senior players? As you were coming through, yeah, it, it was it was really I was scared before coming there because uh, I was uh, arriving at the end of a, a big era like Fabien Pelouse, as you said, uh, um, uh, Yannick Bru, Jean Bouillou, uh, all, all all big players who won a lot, uh, Xavier Garbajosa, uh, and uh, I was a little bit scared about uh, how will will uh, will I be uh, received, and it was the completely opposite. It's 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 great to see how big. The player are and how simple they are. Benjamin uh, know a lot of them. A player like Yannick Josian is so simple. He's, I think, one of the, the best center in the, the French history. And, and he's so simple. And he's a, he's a, a farmer. He loves simple things. Uh, very humble. And uh, this push you to yourself to be humble and, and to work very hard. Uh, and as I told you, uh, the, 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 the trainings were all about games, especially in the preseason, uh, for everyone to, 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 to get to this mentality. And um, we, were, we were not having the impression to train, but we were, tra- we were training a lot. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's different. I, I never experienced uh, anything like this in my life. I, I played for Bézier, uh, then Toulouse, and, and, um, and, uh, and now Racing 92. The, the rugby is more structured uh, in, in the two other clubs, even if with the French team. It was all about phases, building phases and, and try to uh, outfit your, your opponent. But uh, yeah, in Toulouse, the, the main difference will be that uh, 80% of the, the, the time was uh, focused on our game, our style, our vision, and maybe 20% of on the opposite, uh, the opponent, sorry. And... Um, when I when I move in, in in the other club, it was different. It's like eighty percent of the strategy on the strategy, and maybe twenty percent of our style and, and our vision. So it needs a lot of time to to get there. That's why uh, it's hard to to uh, to build this somewhere. You need to have like the president to allow you to to have the time to build this because uh, you, you can't just build that in 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 uh, in, in one year. But uh, once you get the the the, the thing. Uh, uh, Mike was uh, saying that uh, it, it, it wasn't his style, but uh, I can assure you that a player like Thierry Dussautoir, when he arrived in Toulouse, he wasn't the most skilled uh, back row uh, of our championship, but he, but he, he grew a lot uh, playing this game and, uh, and and training this way. And uh, I think um, it, it, it helped him in to be the, the to, to become the player he is now. 
I'll pick up with this in a moment, Ben, but we were talking this week about how English rugby needs a strong Leicester Tigers. And I wonder whether French rugby benefits from a strong Toulouse. Is there anything in that, Yannick? Yeah, I, I completely agree with this. Every, every good year, uh, uh, a good time of French rugby, uh, Toulouse was, was uh, at its best. Because uh, as, I, as I, I usually said, um, uh, French rugby need a strong identity. Every time uh, we weren't in a good place, it's because we lost our our, our, our identity. Uh, I mean that every time you 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 see our our, our coaches, it was so different from uh, Pierre Villepreux and Jean Claude Scrella to Bernard Laporte. It's two different way of uh, seeing the rugby. Then from Bernard Laporte to uh, Marc Lévomont, it was a, a completely different way as well. Uh, then Marc Lévomont to uh, Philippe Saint-André, it's, it's more English. Don't list them all. Don't list them all. There's too many. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, uh, on, the, on the same side, you, you can see the, the, the ABs, for example. Uh, they, they, they start with Graham Henry and then the, the assistant uh, Stevenson take, take it for eight years and now it's, it's it did, uh, the assistant again. So there is a lot of um, uh, coherence. Uh, in in uh, in the vision uh, of the rugby they they, they want to practice. Interesting. Were you going to pick up on that, Ben? Just in terms of the fabric of Toulouse and how integral it is to to the French game. Well, I'll just just ask Yannick why from Bézier and they were he, him and Dimitri Zardeski were absolutely killing it in the youngsters for Bézier and stuff. Who's an an, uh, an ancestral sort sort of. Uh, it's, it's a pillar of French rugby, Bézier, right? It used to be an absolute decade of winning structure and all that. But still, those two guys who were not born and bred, but sort of, you know, raised in the academy of Bézier and, and before in Agde, uh, they were desperate to go to Toulouse. And then Dimitri ended up coming to Stade Francais and Yannick came to Toulouse. But because Toulouse represents Man United of, of, of football, it's the institution it's the grandeur. It's the decades of winning and winning. It's the four. It's the four stars on the jersey. I repeat the same thing. But winning a Brenus for me, winning a, a, a title, a French title, unless you're in Clermont in 2010 when it's the first time in history, I think you win it for yourself. You win it yeah. for your team, the 15 guys, but you win it for yourself and your mates and all that. For me, really, the Champions Cup, and <laughs> again, I know I've never won it, but it would have been putting a star on a jersey for a lifetime, right? And I would have felt that I would have contributed of just adding a star. The symbolic of having a star on a jersey for me is just absolutely priceless. So when you're a 16-year-old and you grow up in France, you do, like Yannick said, you look at the, the titles that they won in 92, 93, all the way to 96 or whatever. You know that their kit is the coolest kit that you want. So you go in the under 18s for France and everybody wants to swap with the Toulouse guys for a pair of shorts or a pair of socks because they just look cooler than others. Then you see them win on the seniors team. You know, they were like the coolest of, the, they were the badass of the badass. And, and, and so to see them bounce back. So we, we all love to hate them when they were winning so much. We didn't really understand why they got into such a dip. And to be honest, there's a lot of people in France who are almost happy to see them, to see them uh, stubble upon themselves and, and not do well, because that's just the reality that we tend to do, to despise absolute winners out of jealousy. Uh, and now that they're back, th th it's, it, it's just good for everyone because they are the strong arm of, they, they are a massive thing in France in terms of French national exposure they represent much more than just themselves they represent a way of playing like Yannick described they represent a style of play like we said they represent you know it's, it's, it's like to, tomorrow you get Man United back on where they should be everybody wants them to win it's just an, a legacy of sport and again I, I, I shouldn't say this but I, I, I would love to see them succeed because it's just it's just in a it's, it's got something special in, in, in the hearts of all French rugby players get clipped up and popped out in uh in the Parisian press and in Claremont, Kayser says go to lose. Who'd have thought that? Um, Yannick, <laughs> before we move on to the, the sort of the game itself, and actually and La Rochelle as well, ju just your view on why the dip happened? It, it's hard to say, but uh, I think they went uh, a little bit far with uh, with the, the generation who won, the, uh, who won a lot. I, I mean, uh, Census Johnson, uh, Patois Bassetti, Thierry Dussautoir. They were legends at the club we we won uh, 2008 2010 2011 2012 so on um, four trophies in five years at some point um, they were injured a lot uh, and they were key players uh, so when your key players doesn't play uh, it's 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 hard to uh, 
it's hard to succeed. The next generation maybe uh, was um, was struggling a little bit. You know, when you when you go after Thierry Dussotois, when you go after Patrice Albacete, when you go after Sensus Johnson, it's 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 a lot to to deal with. Um, But as I said, when they came back with this generation of uh, Romain Tamac, uh, Antoine Dupont, uh, François Cross, uh, Julien Marchand, uh, they 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 grew up uh, winning for Toulouse because, as, as Benjamin said, you can see in the under 16, under 14, <laughs> under 18, Toulouse is winning all the time. At at, the, at this time, I think the 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 espoir, the under 21 of Toulouse, just lost one game, uh, and uh, you can you can see them every time they. They um, they make some turnover in the team. They almost won in Cast, which Cast is a, is a is a great side at the moment. And uh, with a I think average of 21, 22 years old team, they was about to 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 win in Cast. So uh, you can see that what they building is it, it is meant to last. Not it's not just win a trophy. Uh, it's it's about uh, it's about a legacy, as Benjamin said. Did you play to lose tens? Uh, I did. Um, a couple of times. Did you feel Foster. the weight of the club when you played against it? And do you know what I mean by that? That you're playing more than just 15 players. You're playing the history and the the, the you know the glory and the romance and the success, etc. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I think travelling down there, playing away. I know that. I think uh, Gareth he scored one of one of the tries of the tournament down there we still lost but uh, we came away with a moment um but yeah you do i think you know you're going to a hotbed it was you know it was almost especially when you go down to that area of france and sort of the strength around it and then also my memories are like going down and we beat Biarritz down in Biarritz when sort of yash and him and all were We're all playing and Z and all those guys are on fine form. Obviously, I could actually probably name that team. But um, yeah, you go there and you know there's a with an expectation that it's hard to win. So you go almost, you almost put yourself as an underdog, even if you, even if you you're in a team that's firing, because you're going down into their patch. It's now there's crowd back. The crowd plays their role, but then the history of the players, especially when you go to somewhere like Toulouse, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. These guys have done it. This t they know what what to do, and that could be a massive thing this weekend. In the fact that you know one team's running out with four stars on their chest, and the other one's running out with zero. And you know whether you think it's a mental thing or not, it will it'll be in there. And that's that's the thing that really can can count in finals like this. We see that time and time again, particularly in Europe, that teams have to earn their place. At the top oh. table, we mentioned before, Sarri's Munster have all had to go through the pain uh, in order to get to the glory. Um, ben, I loved your Man United analogy. Here's a test for your love and knowledge of the English Premier League. Who are La Rochelle if to lose a Man United? Easy. Le well, Leicester. In, in, the, in the Premier League? I thought you'd in say the, Leicester. Um, yeah. Leicester, no? I'm not so sure because to, that, that would be a little bit unfair in the sense that, to be honest, who saw the Premiership title of Leicester coming What is it in in eighteen or something like that? Yeah, something like it, that. Yeah. It, it was really out, out of nowhere. Extraordinary bunch of players, extraordinary coach, extraordinary dynamic. But it was really a sort of a, a one thing. At the moment, La Rochelle are second of the top fourteen, and they're in the final of the Champions Cup. So it's not like they're just performing in 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 their national league, right? They're dominating both things. I just feel that in La Rochelle, it, which which makes them pretty lethal. And I don't want to take you know downplay everything that I said before, but. They've got John O'Gibbs living leaving in three months. So you don't know what's going to happen in the next six months in La Rochelle. You don't know how long Skelton is going to be able to perform at that level. You don't know how long Vitor Vito is going to go at that level. You don't know how long, you know, Winnie Antonio is going to go at that level. You don't know how long this, this team that's playing at the moment for La Rochelle is going to be able to perform. And I think they've got the perfect mindset instead in saying it's there for the taking. We don't need to win it 10 times. We don't know if we're going to win it 10 times. We don't know if we're building a legacy, but we're just 80 minutes from creating history. And I think that the, 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 the argument of saying like Yannick, and I agree with it, of saying, you know, you need to build, you need to go through the grind, you need to go through the pain, is again, is myself <laughs> saying, <laughs> I, could not, I could not digest of seeing somebody getting something so easily when I know how hard it is. It's like tins. I'm sure in 2019, you were, you were screaming for England to win. 
but there was, must have been a little teeny weeny weeny part of you saying, you know, I wish these guys actually went through all the graft that it was to deliver because it's just human nature to know when you know how hard it is, but sport sometimes gives you an opportunity. You can think, well, hang on, that's too easy. They don't deserve it. You know, but it's just 80 minutes of rugby and then they can have it. So um, La Rochelle will be the Exeter. La Rochelle will be potentially the ex the Leicester in, in the Premiership uh, football. I'll, I'll say Chelsea. Ooh, oh, oh, hang on. I forgot. Uh, I no, forgot, no, 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 I I forgot to say, if you want to speak about say, football. I'll say Chelsea before, before they win their the, the first uh, uh, Champions League uh, uh, against Bayern Munich, I think it was. Chelsea is a strong side. But there is no Chelsea Chelsea style like there is for Man United, you know, uh, like uh, the the Fergie time or or something. But in Ch in Chelsea, there were, it was it was a, it was a great club, big players, good players. But depending on the the coach they had, they were they were playing a, a different style of, of football. And yeah. I think Lausanne is quite the same. It's a strong side, very structured club. Uh, they got they got they have good means, but they play a different rugby. De uh, depending on on the on the on their coach, it's not the case in Toulouse. The, Toulouse is they are the strong uh, thinking about the rugby they want to play, and they see the coach and the players are who are the best ambassador of this style of rugby. So no matter who's coaching, you need to feel this this Toulouse style. That at the moment, what I think you don't you you don't have in 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 La Rochelle. For for example, at the moment. I can see that La Rochelle team is a Ronan Ogara team. I can see in his style on this team. When I see Toulouse team, I don't see that as a Hugo Mola, Hugo Mola's team, but I see as a Toulouse team. How big a factor is Ronan in what La Rochelle don't have in that European pedigree? Can one man bring the history and the importance and the significance, do you think? I think Ronan is one of the best guy I've ever seen in my whole life. He is so confident about winning and about uh, how important it is. And he's ruthless when it comes to what it takes to win. So he doesn't accept uh, on things that uh, doesn't take talent. He's, he's ruthless. He, he won't allow you to, to, to um, I don't know, to not to know your, your calls, not to, to give your best on the field. He won't allow you to, to walk on the field. He'll be very hard on, on people. So he gives a, a team mentality that uh, no matter who you facing, it's all about yourself and what you give to the team. It's a huge opposition of style. And, and I was talking about the, uh, Toulouse, but it, it's not really uh, 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 that uh, Toulouse will win this game. I, I can assure you that uh, if every time Toulouse uh, won the, the European Cup, it was against a French team. But I think... La Rochelle is the, the and us, of course, <laughs> Racing 92, could have been the, the worst team uh, uh, they, they, they could face in final. Did, did Ronan coach you? Was he part of the... Coach, yeah, he, he did. coached me. Uh, uh, it was, yeah, my last coach um, in, you know, when I arrived at Racing, it, he, was, uh, he was already coach, coaching the, the, the defence. Three years. I told you, Alex, that he impacted everyone who was there because yeah. we had him on the show, Yannick, with, with yeah. Alex a couple of weeks ago. I was blown away by his humility of saying he was a legend at Munster as a player. The easy route for him would have been to be to become a coach either for, straight for Ireland, maybe in the backroom staff or something, or to be a big coach for Munster. And he decided to go the hard way because he was like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it absolutely the best of my ability. And he said, I was already a good, good, good coach then, but I wanted to be the best coach that I could possibly be. Yeah. So he went to racing and he gradually, and he was good. And I'm sure you can tell us, Yannick, if he had offers to stay on or something. But then he decides to go to Crusaders to seriously challenge himself. And then he goes to La Rochelle. And I'm sure in the next, I don't know, four or five, maybe post 2023, you'll see him in the Ireland setup. But it's that type of mentality is that he doesn't want to become Ireland coach. He wants to be the most successful Ireland coach in history. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want to be the La Rochelle coach from next year. He wants to take La Rochelle to the next thing. And I think, like Yannick said, it's that winning mentality that can allow La Rochelle to be like, press pause, focus on 80 minutes. We don't need to win it 25 times. Have the humility to say, maybe if we play the game 12 times, we'll win it once, maybe. But we don't need to win it 12 times. We just need to, to you know, beat them by one point over 80 minutes. So that might be just that key differentiator that, that he can bring. Yeah, don't, don't mistake yourself. I don't want Laoshe to, to win <laughs> by pure jealousy because that's the first final 
and uh, <laughs> and and we, we played three last three so uh that's 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 the only thing but as as uh, ben benjamin said uh ronan for me is one of the best coach i i I, I ever had, and he's, he was a young coach at this time. So I think that uh, going uh, two years at the, at the Crusaders and, and being back uh, with, with La Rochelle now, uh, he, he must have been maybe two or three levels um, better than he was uh, uh, when he was at racing. Um, and as I said, it's two opposition of style. Nothing is better than the other one. It's just different. I grew up for 10 years uh, in, in, in the Toulouse ways. That's why I, I know it the most. But I know what a Ronan can bring to a team, and and that's huge. Uh, the confidence he, he can he can give them, the, the the approach of big games he has is um, is amazing. It's very unusual that you get a young coach who sort of captures the interest in their journey in the way that Ronan has. I mean, there are rugby fans in in the UK and Ireland who really want to know what he's doing and where he's going and the impact he's having. And I mean, Tins, you, you probably know better than anyone. There is something very sort of charismatic and magnetic about Ronan. He speaks brilliantly. He delivers success. I just wonder how much impact one man can have. You know, he's a proud Munsterman, a son of Limerick, fluent in French, and taking and creating extraordinary success at La Rochelle. I mean, I don't, we, we all obviously got to pay due credit to John O'Gibbs as well, who... Yeah. Who's, who's having a huge input in it. But yeah. but sort of Ronan has this kind of captivating nature to him. I just wonder if you can put your finger on why. I'll tell you a story about Ronan. Uh, on my last season, my, my first games weren't that good. And uh, one day Ronan just came to me with a book, I think, of maybe 250 pages. It, was, uh, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a book. It was uh, uh, just pages. It just, uh, um, just primed. And... Um, with when you come to uh, more than 30 years old and you want to perform, what does it take you? So it was everything about the training, about the recovery, about the um, the what you what you what you your diet, everything. It was 200 pages, and it just he didn't say anything uh, to me like I was playing bad or he said just I think at the moment you need that, and I just wrote uh, read this book for yeah for a week or two. And um, I don't know. It's it, it's just like he, he sent me a message without without saying saying it. I had the best the best season of my career was my last number season. eight number eight yeah, as number eight yeah. <laughs> and I was like preparing my games like nothing nothing absolutely nothing was luck in my preparation. I, I didn't let anything to 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 random. Uh, I was planning all my my diet. All, all the way I was, uh, my, the strategy, everything. And we had a lot of uh, chat with Renan before the games, after the games. He's like coach and, and players at the same time. So he, 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 a lot of coach forget uh, about how they were when they, when they were playing. Yeah. And he didn't. He didn't. So he's still talking to you as a player, but with the, the coaching experience. And, uh, and he, won, he won a lot as well. So... Yeah, he's, he's a special, special dude. It's a remarkable transformation for a man who was unbelievably angry on the field, wasn't he? In that <laughs> monster red. I mean, he, he, just... he still is as a coach. I, still angry. I, I saw him hammered players, hammered. <laughs> he, he, uh, when you were on, your, on his target, it was like, you, you wish you, you weren't again. It's like, right. I remember one day, Julien Bruno, uh, a, a prop, uh, uh, playing for, for Racing 92, we were playing against uh, uh, Toulon, and... Uh, they just, they just uh, turn over and turn over. So we were about to, they were about to score, and then we, they lost the ball five meters from the line. So we took the ball to their five meters line and lost the ball, and they scored. So I think it was a four minutes phases after phases, and they they intercept, and everyone were back under the post for the the the, the, the conversion, and Junior was at the five of of, uh, of you know, and and it didn't seem important to to walk or to run uh, until the post and he just wait for the team in the middle for the kickoff so we just analyze the thing and at the end of this he say now just watch Julian Bruno and it, it, it just made a highlight of, of Julian and I I was feeling so 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 ashamed for him because it was uh, he was pointing him it's like you let down the team and and it was 
It was true, but he was talking to to Julien, and he, in fact, he was talking to all the boys in the team. Yeah, he, you know, he didn't want it to be uh, to be on the on his target, but at the same time, every time he was uh, someone was doing something good, he was very good at uh, putting the light on on things that uh, you don't see. You know, for example, you 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 score a wonderful try and a lot of good pass and offload and everything, but he will point things that you never see. So the, the guy who just cleaned the ruck uh, on his arm and uh, took out uh, two or three players. And so you were willing to do uh, the dirty job on the field because you know that it will be evaluated. Uh, I love it. Ronan criticizing props and complimenting ruck clear outs. <laughs> he has come a long way. What do you make? I mean, I don't know if you listened to the show that we did with him. Tis. He speaks so well. He sees the game in such a sort of simple way. And with most things in life, simplicity often pays the biggest dividends. I imagine his his detail when he was playing was was astronomical. You know, he put, he directed that Munster team around a little bit. And would you say he was the, be- the best running a threat? No. Would you say he knew how to get the team to win? I think was his probably strongest side to when he was a player so I think he's taken that into his coaching which is why he's so hard on the nuts and bolts because I imagine he worked pretty hard as well but then what he's also managed to keep is and something that sometimes coaches coming out of rugby miss which um, I think Yannick was touching on as well as Ben was you've got to remember what it's like to be a player you've got to remember those physical sessions you do during the week and he does and he remembers that rugby has to still be fun because if it turns into a job, it's not fun. You're not going to get that culture that you want. I think he's definitely learnt from that. And I was fu- I was amazed at how relaxed he seems now when he coaches and, you know, he talks about it and he said, you know, he doesn't spend every hour analysing games. He, uh, and that is quite refreshing. Knowing my little stint in, in coaching, I, I watched so much game, so many games. I was still t- actually training, so I had to get it all done outside so I was doing hours but I get what you're saying and it's having the belief of creating a culture where you're encouraged to you bring the x factor and I'll make sure you do the nuts and bolts and you're in the uh, your position so when the x factor doesn't always come off or what, you've still got the nuts and bolts that are going to hold you together and stop the leaks and yeah. that is what you see sort of with the with the Larish the, the Larishel team at the moment obviously you've got the the bright lights in terms of West Vito you know Aldrich Skelton but then why are they you know they all work back they always have 15 men on their feet to defensively to stay uh, to always have people to go pressure they you know they work hard to get back they have five or six guys who are outstanding at turnovers so they work as a team in a pack and I think that's where he's just facilitated them to go and have fun but he's knitted it all together in a way that allows them to do both sides of the of the coin have the, have the fun but also protect themselves when they need to be and and that that's I think the the true art of a coach is as Yannick said, it, uh, there's a to the lose way, but is he trying to create a way? Now is he going to get that long or want that long at La Rochelle to create a way that they will play and move forward? I don't know, or is it always going to be a Ronan Gara way? Should we talk about the game itself and, and where perhaps it might be won and lost? We, we've touched on a few individuals, but Ben, you know, what do you see here as a, a contrast, a similarity in the way these two are going to play? Which matchups most excite you? What is going to be the difference in the Heineken Champions Cup final? At Twickenham. There's some pretty incredible matchups, to be fair. Uh, Famuina, Winnie Antonio, just the two biggest tight head props with with incredible hands, you know, like human pianos, whatever, going at each other, but capable of shifting the ball whenever needed. And that's the key differentiator between the two. Joe Tecori against Big Will Skelton or, you know, or the Jorge Arnold brothers or whatever. There's some matchups absolutely everywhere. The only thing that worries me for Toulouse is the injury list for their backs which has been ongoing for the last couple of weeks, almost months. Um, Sofiane Guitou, and everybody forgets, but has been absolutely tearing it up at number 13 for Toulouse, and he's been injured for, for months. And now his replacement, well, replacement who sort of stood on that number 13 jersey, Zach Holmes, is very, very unlikely to play. You don't know, and Yannick can tell you, the Guinovest tradition is to whine and whine and whine all week about injuries and, you know, the, the sky is about to fall on our heads and you don't know. So until the team lineup is officially announced on Saturday, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. But apparently he's unlikely to play. And if he doesn't, 
I actually don't know who they're going to play there. So they might shift Romain Tamak at center, put Thomas Ramos at 10. I don't know. Or, you know, you definitely have Medard, um, Cheslin Colby and, and and probably Matisse Lebel on the other wing. But it's just that, that depth at the backs that they're a little bit missing. And I'm not, I'm not concerned at all about the individual quality of players. I'm just a tiny bit concerned about the defensive automatism uh, between the two centers, which can be sort of put, you know picked apart, and that can be pretty tough. And I, I've never defended the centers, so Tins can tell us. But it's I'm sure it's pretty complicated when people come at full tilt to actually defend who you're going to pick on, and you need to have that bit of belief in you. So that that's the only thing that worries me for Toulouse. But if they're on fire, I think I, I think they, they they can be extremely disruptive, and they've got an ascendancy. But I also know from a fact, but for being coached by by and we we, we praise Ronaldo Gara, yes, but I don't know him as a coach. I know John O'Gibbs, and he's got a serious rugby brain yeah. in him, and he will come up with something special. He loves a line-out play. He loves something special to come for the special occasion. And I think they've got the most comfortable situation, being like, we've got nothing to lose. They've already created history for their club. It's 80 minutes before creating, even you know, getting our statue in 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 the, in the city center. It's going to be a, 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 an adaptation to also international refereeing from Luke Pierce. It's going to be absolute key discipline and seizing your opportunities because it's not going to be a 40-point game and the margin between the two team is big, but it's not that big at all. I think there's an element of saying who's going to play 12 or 13 for Toulouse, see how that combines, and also who adapts to the refereeing of Luke Pierce, see that combines, and see what Jono comes in comes out with in terms of lineup moves for La Rochelle. When you said wine and wine and wine all week, I thought that sounded like a Tyndall game plan. I thought he was suddenly coming out of retirement. That's a bar- that was like a barbarian's game. For him. Exactly. I saw your eyes light up at that point. Um, what about for you, Yannick? I mean, you know, Ben has touched on a number of the head-to-heads there, but what excites you about Toulouse? What excites you about La Rochelle, given, you know, what you know of them from Racing 92? Yeah, I think the, the opposition of style, um, uh, what excites me the most is like, uh, yeah, at the moment, you know, it's like, I like to say that in, in rugby, there is a uh, uh, fashion in, in rugby also. So uh, at, there is a period that uh, the best defense always win. There is a, a, a period that the, the best offense always win. There is a, a, a certain type of fancy in, in rugby and uh, it's it's... Most of the time, the world champion who said it, like uh, the ABs is world champion, so they set uh, like the the fashion style of of rugby. The the, the South Africa uh, wins the, the 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 trophy, and and they set the, the uh, a different type of rugby. So uh, this is two opposition of style. It's different when uh, uh, it's not when Exeter play uh, the Saracens, for example, which is quite quite the the the, the, the same style. I think uh, the, for example, La Rochelle with the first team never took uh, any try on drives. The, the 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 way they defend drives in lineouts is outstanding, and Toulouse also build the uh, attacking style with being strong in forwards, uh, uh, fixing the, the the defense by doing a lot of drives, and then they have space uh, uh, backs against backs. Uh, on the same line, so they love to to launch the game on, on on scrum, for example, because they 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 don't have, they don't have to 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 to, to fix the, the the forwards. But uh, will Toulouse be able to um, to 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 set the the, the style of play? Uh, I'm not sure. And the way uh, um, uh, La Rochelle defender uh, has waved uh, on uh, on Toulouse, I don't know if if Toulouse will be able to uh, to to put the the, 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 the gaming place if, if they arrive to do that I think they, they will win but uh, I don't know if um, if uh, if La Rochelle will allow them to, to do so sitting on the fence as we say in England you're picking up splinters with a maybe <laughs> but, but maybe not but, who but knows? I think uh, what you're trying to get across is it is a complete clash of styles in some which way which is brilliant it is, I mean it's exactly yeah. what you want in a final and that is why you know I think to lose is the greatest team in Europe at, at this, pre- uh, this present moment when they're playing their game. Now, they happen to just be playing one of the best teams at spoiling a game like that because of how much they can, how many defenders they keep on the ball, how defensively aware they are in terms of pressure on the ball, when they go for pressure on the ball. You know, you look at, they've got the likes of Skelton, Bottier, Vito, Guadran, Liebenberg, who all go after ball at the right time and they make right decisions because I think their defensive setup is basically to try and keep 15 men on their feet so they'll only go when they get a chance to and then if you can slow 
if you slow to lose his ball down a lot it, and you've got 15 men on your feet it gives you a lot of time to go after people now we've still seen that uh, Toulouse can win that, that way but it, they definitely prefer high tempo rucks quick rucks quick clean outs forwards pick and go on quick ball as well and then they find the right time where they create overlaps and then they release, the, release their bat line so um, that's I think what what he's trying to get what he's trying to get at is it is a genuine clash of styles and whoever can impose their game will 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 come out on top. I think. Such a good competition. It's such a go on. Also in Toulouse they have a lot of game changer. When you talk about Chessin Kobe, uh, yeah. yes, uh, right, yeah. uh, uh, Romain Tamad, Antoine Dupont, a lot of game changer. So um, I think La Rochelle can dominate. Uh, all the way for 60 minutes maybe and on one spark you know I, it reminded me the the, the old bits maybe about Sauvignon for Benjamin but the final against uh, against uh, Toulon uh, Clermont against Toulon uh, Clermont was now. dominating Bloody this hell. game <laughs> they were dominating this game the first half is like you you, you, you could feel that uh, Clermont will win by, by 30 or 40 points maybe but on a drive uh, um, Drew Mitchell just, just took this ball and and, 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 and when to score this try in the final a game changer is, 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 is a lot you know uh, I think the the, 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 the Clermont's team at this time were well more organised um, than, than the, the Toulon team but Toulon had game changer in that team yeah. he's getting very good at this Yannick very very good at this <laughs> he knows where to hit you where it hurts a great <laughs> moment for Drew Mitchell in European yeah, rugby yeah. it was ben a great sat try back, which means one of the best tries one sure of the best better. Did Ben miss one of the tackles as well? I don't know. Just throw another boot in there. We're, Why not? Eh? We're, we're running out of time and patience with our um, with our esteemed French regular. I, can't, I must just say it's such a good tournament, and it's it's so good to have heavyweights and history against upstarts and excitement. And here's hoping for a mega mega uh, f- final to look forward. I can't believe it's twenty five years. You know, twenty five years of what we all know and love as the Heineken Champions Cup, and you call the Ash Cup, which is sort of. You know, it does the job. It's not quite the same. Pick me a winner and pick me a star of the match. And Ben, you can go first. You can keep it short and sweet if you're running out of love for what we're doing here today. So I'll, I'll pick a very, very, sh- very close, tight winner for Toulouse. I will say 21-19 for Toulouse. Ooh. And my star player uh, will be the one and only... Well, I'll go for Max Medar. Wow. Like Max Medak's experience, left boot, kicking in the corner, just doing something that unexpected. Chelsea and Colby won't be under too much pressure. Antoine Dupont will be milk on, on the stove. Everybody will look looking out for him. Uh, and, and I'll pick Max Medak. Love it. Rolling it back. Yannick, the winner will be, and who do you think will have most impact? It's hard to, to say. As, as Benjamin, I will say a close game. I'll say Toulouse as well. Um... Maybe uh, like a, a 1917, for example. Okay. And uh, my man of the match will be uh, Justin Kobe because uh, I think he's the game changer in the team. And he, like, as, as Benjamin said, Antoine Dupont, everyone expects him to be great, to be good, because he always has been good on the, uh, during this season with French team and with, with Toulouse. Justin Kobe didn't have a good season uh, since he arrived uh, from his uh, world title. And uh, this season, I, I, I don't have a, like a big game uh, of him, uh, maybe against us, playing 10 uh, in, in the start of the season. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't have a great game. So if you analyze Toulouse, you know he's a threat, but I, I don't, I'm not sure that you mention him as a threat regarding this season. But he's a big player, so you see big players, big games. So. Two for Toulouse in tight ones. Two sort of box office stars of the match, tins. I also I want to I want to I was going to just go the opposite just to just to give provide balance. Yeah, provide balance. But if, if I put my hand on my heart, I think to lose will win. I I don't think for the same reason as Yannick said. I don't think they'll be able to contain all their match breakers um, all at the same time. As you said, if they watch Dupont too much. Someone else, whether it be in the forwards, whether it be Marchand or whether it be whoever it might be, you've got also then got the likes of Millard, Colby, as you said, Entomac. I just don't think they'll be able to keep their eye on all of them. I think it's going to be a bit of a higher scoring game, though. I'm going to go um, 
two twenty three to Toulouse. So Yannick put his finger on it by saying how Justin Kobe basically hasn't had an extraordinary season, but considering he's set the you know the the bar so high, it's pretty complicated for him. But there's one guy who had an absolutely extraordinary season, and he's been getting better weekend after weekend. Is unfortunately Julien Marchand is gonna who's gonna miss out on that one, oh, um, it's, 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 and and. Yeah, he's, he's he, yeah he's been he's been suspended um, for for three or four weeks after after an illegal clear out uh, against against Bordeaux uh, on yeah. Romain Bureau's whilst and I, I feel for him because he he told me that he was a bit he felt that he wasn't hurt at all so they, they got a letter from Romain Bureau saying that it was nothing they got a physician you know sort of pro, proving that the, the the force of the hit was not particular I think he's been absolutely outstanding. And I think when Ronan Ogara highlights a Chelsea and Kobe try, if he's the coach of Toulouse, he will be highlighting something that Julien Marchand has done just before. And missing him is going to be such a big blow that it might impact the overall performance of Toulouse. So it might be his brother, Guillaume Marchand, who will start, or Peato Movaka, I don't know. But And either are very good players, but they're still very young, not the same experience, not the same um, leadership capacity that Julien Marchand has, has proven. Uh, and on the other side, Bourgarit is, is doing really well, the La Rochelle hooker. So that's another big blow that we didn't mention, but I just thought I'd throw it out there because when you talk about a guy who's been bloody hell, he's been absolutely on fire for the next for the last eight, nine months, it's it's him. Are you therefore talking yourself out of Toulouse? Yeah, I'm taking my switch back. I'm taking yeah. my switch back now as well. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to row back from that. Yeah, yeah. That's were you going to add to that, Yannick? Or you, you're, you're happy, you've made your, your Toulouse bed and you're happy to lie in it. No, yeah, but uh, as I said, it's going to be very close. So we, I, can, I can mistake myself. So with, uh, I just say that with no... With no um, uh, security because uh, <laughs> sport is sport sport is sport yeah. that's what we want we want a mega final between the heavyweights of Toulouse and the, the incredible challenges of La Rochelle some wonderful wonderful subplots in this game some fabulous matchups and we have got fans back at rugby matches what an impact they've had already despite the fact we're still somewhere off full houses. I was, was are... going to say, Alex, just on that, do you think we can have the madness that we've had over the past two days in terms of matches? In Please. Nine, ten tries disallowed at the yeah. Bristol game. Uh, you know, can we just have incredible. that madness of just having fans back and make the games like that? Be brilliant. Yeah. Ben, you said earlier you drink 100 pints before the game and, and 100 pints after the game. If I could just add, please drink those 100 pints responsibly because I think otherwise <laughs> Ofcom will be, will be on our case. But if you're going, enjoy it, make a lot of noise, bring a lot of colour. Um, we are very much looking forward to meeting our competition winners. God, it's going to be nice to be back in stadiums. And actually, Tins, I, I, I was trying to think before this, the last time I saw you, I reckon it would be February 2020. We can have a cautious hug. Yeah. Bring, the big, bring the big one. And then we're sat front row on the sofa, aren't we, as well? Yeah, we've got Heineken chairs and a couple of beers and pretty nice pretty spots. idyllic. Ben's got to work, so he's he's bringing the class. Are you doing BT or Channel 4? I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come and give you a high five, don't worry. Come and have a high five. Yeah, right. Go well, enjoy the game. Yannick, can I just say, firstly, thank you so much for joining us. And secondly, how wonderful it's been to have an incredibly stylish, eloquent, respected, <laughs> successful... <laughs> Um, and lucid back rower on this show. It's it's something we've been looking for for a while, and the look go the search goes on. But it's been very nice to have you, and I hope you come a back double, again. That's a double cheap that's shot. A double. It's, it's, a double cheap it's, shot. it's a compliment and a backhand. If he's not here, you can give him a backhand. He won't listen anyway. He doesn't listen to anything that any of us ever say. Go well, Yannick. We'll hopefully see you in a European Cup final, um, a Heineken Champions Cup final before too long as well with Racing ninety two, and hopefully get the job done sooner rather than later. That's it from us. We are at Twickenham on Saturday. Keep across our socials at Good, Bad and Rugby. We'll be having a lot of fun interviewing lots of interesting people. We've got Maggie Alfonsi, the great magster, is coming to play with us as well. Ben's going to dip in. It's just going to be really nice back watching meaty heavyweight rugby with fans uh, and in the company of Heineken. Thanks to all three of you. Enjoy the rest of your weeks. May the best team win. We'll be seeing you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>